right, hello everybody and welcome back to episode 4 of the 5M Lua Zero to Hero tutorial series. Super glad to have you all back. And before we get started, I just want to say thank you for the support on the first couple videos. Uh, I recorded those first three episodes without releasing any of them, so I didn't really know what the response would be. And as I record this fourth episode, the first episode has just gone out earlier today. We've already got some great activity in the Discord, and uh, the reception has been really great. So I just wanted to say thank you. I really appreciate all of the support so far. And we're going to try some better editing uh, with this video and videos moving forward. So hopefully that's noticeable. I'm still kind of getting in the flow and learning how to you know, edit things efficiently and make things entertaining and engaging. So thank you for your support and bear with me as we kind of continue to improve the channel and improve the Discord. With that said, let's go ahead and get started. So today we are going to be writing a teleporter script that's going to have two functions. Uh, one is going to teleport us to another player, and the other one is going to teleport another player to us. And we're going to call those go to and summon. Like we talked about in the last video, today we're looking at client server communications. So we're going to be writing our first server side script, and we're also going to be looking at how clients communicate with the server and how the server can communicate with the client a couple different ways, both uh, some of the nifty features in OneSync and also the kind of traditional method of just sending events back and forth. So there's a couple small changes to our, or one small change to our manifest file for this resource and you'll notice we have a new server scripts key here and in there we're just indicating server slash server dot lua and this will be the code that is executed on the 5m server itself so let's go ahead and get started by writing our client side script and i'm just going to type out some of the things that we're going to need here so we're going to need a command to go to another player we're going to need a command to bring a player to us and then what we might need, and you'll see why we're going to, this is a maybe, is because we're going to change a little bit of this halfway through the video, is an event that teleports us to a specific location. So let's, let's go ahead and build that. We'll go ahead and build that one as well. So this first command to go to another player, let's call this go to. And you'll notice that last time where we used source, I'm just using an underscore. That's because source is irrelevant. So I'm just assigning that, that to a variable called under, underscore because it doesn't really matter to us. Now, the first argument of our go to command is going to be the person that we want to go to, the server ID of the person that we want to go to, which I'm going to call the target. So let's go ahead and assign player ID, or uh, what we're going to say is target ID is equal to args1. And we also want to do a little bit of air handling here. So I'm just going to say, if not target ID then, and just like before, we're going to trigger some chat messages. And now what do we do from here? We obviously need to talk to the server. Uh, clients can't talk directly to other clients. So what we need to do is we need to have the server act as the intermediary here. So what we're going to do, and I know you're going to be shocked by the name of this event. So when we talk from client script to client script uh, or from server script to server script, we use trigger event. That's in a local event that's going out to whatever system that code is running on. When we need to send an event from the client to the server, we use, believe it or not, trigger server event. So we're going to trigger server event. And now when you're naming your events, one thing that's good to do is to just prefix the name of your event with the name of the resource that's triggering it. Uh, just kind of keeps things cleaner and more organized. So I'm gonna go ch underscore teleporter colon go to. And then the parameter that we're going to want to send to the server is the target ID that we want to go to. And that's gonna be it for our go to command. So now let's look at the command to bring a player to us. And we're going to call this one summon. And just like before, we're going to have a target ID. And we're also going to want to validate that, make sure that that target ID, like the user provided that target ID. And just like before, we're going to want to trigger a server event called ch underscore teleporter uh, summon. And then, of course, the target ID. Now, this last thing that we want is we need to listen for an event that tells us to go to a specific location. So we are going to add an event handler and we're gonna call this one ch teleporter uh, teleport. Now keep that in mind because we're gonna need to use that on the server. And the parameter that we're going to expect is target coordinates is what we're gonna call that. And now the native that we're going to use here is set entity coordinates or set entity cords, which is going to set the coordinates of an entity to 
set the location of an entity to whatever coordinates. Now the first parameter here, if we take a look at the natives, is going to be an entity. And the entity, uh, we're going to want to be us. So like we discussed in the last one, we can use player ped ID to get the handle of our player's entity. And now we're going to want to set the coordinates of ourselves to target coordinates. Now it's worth noting here, you might think, well, why don't we just get the ped, the, the handle of the person that we want to go to or that we want to summon and then teleport them to us on the client. Well, that's because the client doesn't have that kind of control over another entity like that, which is why we need the server to mediate it for us. And another thing that's very important to note here is that when we are uh, sending events over the network, so from client to server or server to client, we need to indicate that those events are safe for net. So as it stands right now, when you have an event handler, this uh, will only accept this event from uh, scripts running in the same location as it exists, right? So client to client or server to server. But in this case, we're expecting this event to come from the server to the client. So we need to indicate that this event is safe for net. And the way that we're going to do that is by using register net event and then passing the, per the name of the event. So now we can indicate that this event is safe for the network and we can accept it if it comes from the server. Now, just to clean things up, one thing that you can do is you can just use register net event and add event handler all in one. So we just use register net event and then we pass in our function just like this was add event handler. And this is going to mark the event as safe for network and also handle it. All right, just gonna clean up my comments here. And now that this is done, we're gonna need to look at the server side. And what we're gonna do on the server is we're going to handle two events teleporter go to and teleporter summon. And we're also going to send an event back to the clients, teleporter teleport. So on the server, and once again, since these events are coming from the client, we need to register net event to indicate that the event is going to be safe for network. And we're just gonna do ch underscore teleporter go to. And then of course we have our target ID coming in as a parameter. Now. Events are kind of interesting because when we're getting an event from the client to the server, we've got kind of a magic variable that's hidden. We're obviously not putting it here, but it does exist called source. And that's going to give us the server ID of the client that sent the event. So what I like to do is just assign that to a variable called player ID. It's a little bit easier for me to work with. So let's go ahead and think out what we're going to need to do in this uh, function. So we are going to need to get the entity handle of the client or of the target we're going to need to get the coordinates of the target, and we're going to need to send the coordinates to the client so it can go to the target. So first things first, let's go ahead and get the, hand, the entity handle of the target. And the native that we're going to use for this is called get player ped. And on the server, if we call get player ped and pass in the server ID, of another client, it will return the ped handle for that client. So we're gonna say target ped is equal to get player ped target ID. Now we should probably also do some validation here. So if a target ped doesn't actually exist, let's say we provided a target ID of blah, 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 blah. Um, then the target ped is going to be zero. So what we can say is if target ped is less than or equal to zero, then, and we're gonna want to do some air handling here. So let's tell the person who requested the go to that the target doesn't exist. And we can use a chat message for this. Now, since we need to add a chat message to the client, we're going to have to use trigger client or trigger client event. Just like on the client where we're sending an event to the server, we use trigger server event. On the server, if we're sending an event to a client, we need to say trigger client event. Now, something very important to talk about here. How do we know which client to trigger the event on? Well, you might think it was maybe the client that made that sent in the event, but what if there wasn't an event? What if we were sending an event to a client for some other reason? Or much like we're going to be doing uh, in the summon uh, event, what if we need to send a client event to another client? So the second parameter in trigger client event is the server ID of the client you're sending the event to. In this case, it's going to be the player ID that we defined up here. And then we can just continue like normal. Now, another thing to note here is let's say you wanted to send an event to all clients. Maybe you wanted to let 
everybody know that the server is getting ready to restart. In that case, we would just replace the uh, player ID that we're sending the chat message to or any event to with negative one. And that's gonna send that event to all clients who are connected. All right, and the next thing that we need to do is we need to get the coordinates of the target. So this is gonna be pretty simple and uh, we're just gonna call get entity chords, which I think we've done in a previous episode, so you should already be familiar with that. And then we're going to pass in the target ped. And this will give us the coordinates of the targeted ped. And now we need to send that coordinate to the client so it can go to the target. So if you remember, in our client script, we created an event called ch underscore teleporter teleport that the client will receive and change its own coordinates to whatever coordinates it is fed. So if we go trigger client event, and we provide that event name, and of course player ID, and then target position as our parameter. And that's it for go to. So now let's uh, let's go ahead and try it out. So let's restart our teleporter script. And now I've got two clients running here. I've got up here in the top left is client one. Looks like he is at the uh, pier right now. And client two down in the bottom looks like they are at Mirror Park. So let's say client number two wants to go to client number one. All he needs to do is say go to one. And there they are. Perfect. So let's make sure our error validation is working okay. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just slash go to without any, uh, any server ID. And perfect, we get please provide a target ID. And now let's say I try to go to 999, which obviously isn't going to be a connected client. Sorry, 999 doesn't seem to exist. So it looks like everything is working well so far. Let's jump back over to our server code and start working on the summon script. So just like before, we're gonna say register net event, ch underscore teleporter summon function target ID, if I can type tonight. And I'm just gonna go ahead and kinda clean this first event up a little bit here. All right. So once again, gonna wanna grab the player ID. And now let's think about what we need to do here. So what we actually need to do is we need to get the coordinates of the, the client, the requesting client, since we're kinda doing things in inverse here. And we're going to want to uh, teleport the target to the client. So in this case, what we're actually going to want to do is get the player ped of you know the player instead of the target so we can get their coordinates. So we're gonna say get player ped, and then of course we're gonna pass in our player ID instead of our target ID. And now we'll want to get their coordinates as well. So we can say player pos is equal to get entity chords, player ped. And now we can just trigger a client event to uh, called ch underscore teleporter teleport. And then in this case, we're gonna want to send that event to the target and we're gonna want to give it the player position. And uh, that's gonna be it for this one. So if we restart our resource and go back to our clients and let's just get this guy a little bit further away. All right, so we've got client two way down here at the end of the pier and client one uh, closer to the other end of the pier. And so now client two is going to summon client one. And in this case, we'll see client one get teleported to client two. And look at that, it worked just fine. All right, let's talk about OneSync and how we can make this even better. So what we've done here is a little bit of an old school way of thinking in 5M before OneSync was really a thing. Now, one of the great features of OneSync is that it allows you to access a lot of what was before kind of only existed on the clients on the server. And we're already using that with this get entity chords native here. But we can take this a step further and actually set entity chords on the server as well. So we don't even need to have this client side event here that handles the teleportation, nor do we need to send that event here. We can actually directly manipulate a client's coordinates from the server, which is really great. So let's talk about how we can refactor into doing that. So instead of teleporting, or instead of sending an event telling the player to teleport to these coordinates, we can just teleport them there correctly. Now what that is going to require is that we have the uh, ped handle for our player. So let's go ahead and add that. And then we can just replace this call with a set entity chords call right on the server. So what we want to do for our go to script is set the coordinates of the player ped to the target position. And now we can eliminate this 
trigger client event. And of course we've eliminated it on the client side as well. And we can do the same thing down here in summon where we are going to want to get the, uh, the ped for the target. So we can say target ped. And of course, since we're now using the target ped in this function as well, we'll probably want some validation. So I'll just copy and paste the same validation down here. And then of course with summoning, remember what we're doing is setting the coordinates of the target ped to the player position. And so look at how much we've cleaned this script up. We no longer have to handle that on the client side. The server side's a lot more cleaner and we're directly manipulating our clients directly from the server, which is really the best way to do things now that one sync exists. So let's go ahead and restart our script and just make sure this works. We would expect it to behave exactly the same. So once again, I'll get one of my players a little bit further away. Oops. All right, and so now we have our players a little bit further apart and on the first client, let's go ahead and say summon two. And it still works perfectly. All right, and that's gonna wrap it up for this episode. So as promised, we learned how to write a server side script and we also discussed communicating between the client and the server and vice versa. And we've also looked at some great features that are available in OneSync that are setting you up to be a fantastic 5M developer straight from the start, making sure you're using the latest technology available in 5M and not starting out at a disadvantage. So uh, like I'm trying to do with every episode, I've got some homework for you. And this week's homework is to take the same concept, hopefully from the homework from the last episode, you figured out a little bit about how weapons work in 5M. So take the same concept of telling a client telling the server to have something happen on another client and apply that to weapons. So maybe create a command that one client can have a weapon be given to another client and see how that works out for you. If you'd like to learn more about some of the advanced functionality available in OneSync, I have some great news. We're also starting a second series today. We're calling this the 5M Master Series, and it's deep dives into more advanced functionality available in 5M. This first episode, which is coming out right alongside this one, is going to cover state bags, which is a great way to share information between client and server, server and client, and also client to client, attaching information to entities and also global information. So definitely be sure to check that out if you feel like diving into the deep end. And with all of that said, this wraps up episode four. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to hit subscribe. Make sure you click the bell icon to be notified when the next episode comes out. Comment down below what you enjoyed and also be sure to join our Discord, which is linked down below. We're working on growing a great community of developers that help each other. I try to be real responsive in there. And you can also get the source code for each of these episodes I release. So the Discord is really a great resource to join. In the next episode, we're gonna cover threads and controls and some other information that's really going to start setting you up to writing fully fledged resources. So by the end of the next episode, I hope you'll have enough to really, really get out there and build something great. And then we'll continue to build on that knowledge through the rest of the Zero to Hero series and the new series coming out like the Master Series. So thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one.